Hi, I'm Keegan, and this is A Bunch of Gamers. This is our 92nd episode of Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. Labyrinth in the Machine. I'm going to go around and have my players introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sam. I play Cora. She's an Aruna in the Geta Fenris. I'm Tyler, and I play Kyle, also known as Guards the Low. He's a Philodox of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm Adam. I play Mark Guides the Fallen, and he's a third of the Children of Gaia. Hi, I'm George. I'm playing Roy Mindscape. He is a Ragabosh with the Stargazers. Hi, I'm Sean. I play Zeb, Speaks in Sweet Whispers. He is a Theurge of the Silent Striders. Hello, my name's Thomas. I play Dimitri Howells in Memory, Lupus Galliard of the Bone Nars. Last time, the Pax made it past the Cyberdog guards and entered the Cyber Realm. Moving through, trying to investigate, finding any kind of information that could lead them to proving that Drone Master and other cyber dogs of the Sept of the Steel Mountain had fallen to the Weaver. During their investigation, Zeb, Roy, and Mark ended up in Uptown with the cyber dog Foster and Lauren Soundwave, who was convinced to help them after they revealed that their investigation was to make sure no cyber dogs had fallen. And back in downtown, Cora, Kyle, and Dimitri were confronted by an old enemy. Dr. Appleton had re-emerged and had joined something known as the Progenitors, using strange new technology that shifted Cora's bones into silver and another device that seemed to rewind time itself. They were left wondering what they would have to do before the groups once again reunited and with Soundwave entered the computer realm. And so you stand on an electrified glass sphere around you, the infinite web of the computer network radiates around you, thousands of different strands of silk firing off electrons as hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of spiders carrying data between nodes in an infinite mass web that represents every single computer in existence and that has ever existed with all information here and it to be found. As Soundwave goes, I think I can get us to the right place. Uh, do you guys mind if you follow me? Certainly Please. not. All right, as she starts to concentrate and gets a bit mixed up as you're drawn away, as she goes, no, I'm sorry. And so it takes about what feels like an hour of searching. As you guys go around the web several times, after about four hours, you finally get to the right one. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I, this is the right one. I'm sure of it. As you see the massive node and a great spirit kind of forms around it. The spirit is odd. It is covered in what appears to be dark plate mail armor. Its face completely hidden with eyes that burn slightly as it asks for the passcode to enter. It is here that sound wave goes. Six legs to walk the strands, ten fingers to craft the future, two eyes to view the future, one mind to redeem the mother. The spirit nods and moves to the side. I will need Gnosis rolls, uh, difficulty four, I believe, to enter the micro level. No, it's willpower, sorry. Willpower diff six. As you all focus and you all get drawn in as it's a huge, almost like office-like building with paintings on the wall that have strange labyrinths about them. Each painting is labeled with um, a different folder, it seems. Research, personal, umbral journal, the machine messiah, Gabriel van der Linden, Promethean Days Presentation, Spirit Index, and Network Designs. <clears throat> you think it might be in the personal? Well, I think something wouldn't, like that wouldn't be rightly advertised. Maybe it's something a little bit more cryptic. Umbral jur Journal? 
perhaps? And so you approach the Umbral Journal mural. As you jump, as the first of you jumps in, you notice it waves like a pool of water as the rest of you follow, and the whole scene completely changes with behind you another portrait that resembles the room you just came from. The room is a stone corridor, long and twisted, labyrinthian, as Soundwave goes, Ugh, of course, this makes sense. Is this some sort of defense mechanism for this information? Yes, because she has, she's a third, she has probably a lot of influence on how she could shape her own Umbral database and knows the right spirits to do, deal with on these things. And she's clearly taken inspiration from her own hobbies. Uh, she's a, she was a big fan of Labyrinths and Lamia by Magicians by the Bay. Oh, I've heard of this game. Be careful, though. I know her favorite video game is also called Shadow Spirits. And uh -oh. <laughs> the logic of this world might resemble that. But you play for keeps. All right, tread lightly, then. Tread very lightly. As you start to move out through the ever-switching corridors, to your left is a dead end to the to your to right in front of you. It goes onward, and you see some. Uh, it open up into a room, and to your right, the hallway continues on before shifting up north. Which way would you like to proceed? I have a hunch about the passageway with the dead end. I'm just thinking when dealing with something spiritual, even though something may look complicated and labyrinthian, sometimes the answer is just right in front of you. So a dead end might seem off-putting, but maybe there's something about the dead end that we can... Is So I, I know this is the Umbra, so I expect the answer to be no. But like, is the floor worn at all in certain areas versus others? Like, is that a possibility even here? Uh, you look, and it does seem like it is slightly more worn to the north of you. Is there a ceiling above us, Keegan, or is it yes. open air? It's the ceiling. Uh, you know why I asked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure. This is either a very short flight or a very long walk. Uh, all right. So let's go uh, check out the dead end. If it's an illusion, then we walk right through it. If not, well, it's a dead end, and we know it's a dead end. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, leaning, towards, I'm leaning towards the dead end. And then just note, then I would say typical maze-going strategy. Find a wall, stick to that side, walk it. <laughs> so check out the dead end. So as you get to the dead end, as you all approach, suddenly a gate slams behind you. As you start hearing voices... Oh, looks like we caught something. As you see towering orc-like creatures in armor and spears, looking like crude replicas of the orcs typically seen in Kings of Jewelry. Looks like we got some intruders. As you see spears starting to poke through near you guys. What's the password? Oh boy. I don't, I don't know the best words. <laughs> yeah. What's the spider from Lord of the Rings? Um, Eric... She Shelob? Sh is it Shelob? It's yeah. Shelob. Okay. I'm pretty. I'm gonna. I want to say that's the the password because it's a spider in the Weaver's network in a Lord of the Rings referenced maze. That's it, it's a wild ass guess, but it's it's that's my guess. The spider you're thinking of is Heapelt. He pelts. <laughs> okay. I'll take a guess. He pelts. Oh, 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 so close. No, silly boy. It was the scorpion that ate the trees of light and the first, first nut masterpiece of the series. The Bill Malarian. <laughs> As the gate opens and you see the orcs divide into ten of them. Oh some with spears, some with swords, some with axes. How silvery do they these spears, swords, and axes look? Or do they look irony? They look irony. Oh, good. Roll for initiative, champs. 
I'm gonna say I passed them from now on. Should just be roll initiative, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and one awesome. rage for entering combat. Yes. Thank you. I kind of need that. Orc four is going to come in and attack with his spear. He's going to attack. Who would be the one in the back of the lo- the the line? I guess. Last one to enter the cage area. Probably me, because, you know, okay. apathetic. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Dimitri, what are you doing this round? So it's uh, one's going to spear Roy, one's going to s- spear Dimitri, and the other one's going to sword at Zeb. I'm going to use Call of the Wild uh, and then spend the rage to take a dodge action. Okay. And Zeb? All right, I'll spend a rage to dodge, and uh, my action will be Command Spirit. Kyle? Uh, so first, what about Soundwave? Oh, yes. One rage for Krynos. And then they're going to attack. She's going to attack orc number five. All right, Kyle? I will spend two rage, one to enter Krynos, one to dodge, and one to attack uh, orc six. All right. Orc one is going to sword Kyle. Orc two is going to arrow mark orc three is going to arrow cora roy i guess i will spend a point of rage to instant shift to krynos and dodge all right orc number seven is going to lord roy spear cora and go with sword zeb and arrow kyle or, no, we'll do uh, arrow mark. Uh, mark? Insta shift to Krynos. Actually, we're going to do that to Hispo. And then uh, we're going to spend a willpower to activate resist pain. And then I could spend up to half of my permanent rage rounded up. Yes, so you can spend two points of rage. I'll spend another rage to dodge. Okay, so you spend a point of rage to shift to Hispo. Mm-hmm. You're activating resist pain. Mm-hmm. You're dodging. Uh, resist mm-hmm. pain is an automatic op- option, so do you want to not spend that other point of rage, or do you want to take an attack action? So I still got an attack action. Mm-hmm. I want to hold my attack action to uh, after Kyle is done attacking his target and attack that target. Oh, what kind of attack are you going to do? Are you going to claw or are you going to bite? Uh, because I am in Hispo, I'm going to bite. Okay. All right. Cora? What are you doing? I'm going to insta shift, spend a point of rage to dodge. I'm going to attack orc number eight two times, so I'm going to spend three rage for that. So it's on you, so roll your attack roll. And you instantly kill orc eight. Nice. Kill me. As you continue to claw at its, um... Yes, I do. Yes. All right, Mark, you shift to Hispo. You activate Resist Pain. All right, awesome. Now roll dodge. All right, there we go. All right, so two roll over. Roll stamina, please. All right. All right, as you take one point of lethal damage, as the arrow strikes you, and you see it disappear in a puff of black dust. So, ugh. As at the bottom of your vision, and only your vision, Sig, you see a little bar tick up that's violet, and it seems to be going down very slowly as it hovers at the corner of your eye and only the corner of your eye. Every time you try and look at it, it moves with your vision. Well, that's interesting. Now, the next orc comes along, and they're swinging at Zeb. Zeb, you dodge out of the way as you see the orc bring up its sword, and its sword gets abnormally large mid-swing as it strikes the ground, and you see sparks fly everywhere. The next one is coming in for for Roy, swinging its sword. As it misses, and once again, same, same thing, its sword gets huge and then slams down before shifting back to a normal size. Uh, Roy, as you shift into Krynus... All right, Cora, uh, you got to dodge. You successfully leap out of the way of the arrow. Nice. As the arrow strikes and you hear the thump, tink behind you, 
The strange thing is, is all the sounds that these things make as they try and hit you sound indistinguishable from the previous one's swing. All right, next one's gonna try an arrow mark. So Mark, you may do another dodge roll. Remember that you need to remove one die from your dodge pool. As the arrow goes off, you take three points of lethal damage and that little bar at the bottom of your vision fills up and you now start taking one point of aggravated damage per turn for the next three turns. As you see a little flashing thing that says poison at the bottom of your vision. Mark will speak up and say, uh, anybody else getting these weird notification things in their vision? Kyle, as you see the other orc come in and swing at you, its sword growing large once again, you get a dodge. You successfully dodge out of the way. The sword strikes the earth hard. All right, Kyle, you shift into Krynus. And I believe you are clawing at orc number six. Yes. As you rip the orc in half and it is down. And so orc number six is down. Mark, you'll end up attacking a uh, empty spot. All right. Zeb? Okay, and this is the, when you tell me if it works or not, this is going to be the command spirit roll. I'm going to do it on orc number five. Okay. Difficulty is Gnosis rating, and I can just have it be a blank difficulty, and you can tell me if I succeed based on my roll. All right. As you reach out and you feel the echoing back to you, it's not a true spirit. It's a representation of the realm itself. Uh, oh, that's my action. Yeah. All right. Soundwave shifts into Krynos and attacks Orc number five. She hits... And the orc that she attacks, orc number uh, five, is still up. Dimitri. All right. Uh, so I believe that's a dodge action, call of the wild. So. Okay. Call of the wild. Make that roll. All right. Everyone can get three points of rage. So yep, that one's attacking Dimitri. Dimitri was not able to dodge. So it hits you, and Dimitri. Though the swing in any other normal circumstance would only seem to do three points of damage, it strikes and does twice as much, doing six points of damage as the strike hits you, and you feel yourself get launched back slightly. Uh, what what damage? What uh, type of damage is that? Uh, lethal. Oh, ouch. Yeah. And finally, the last one's coming in for Roy. Roy, dodge with one one fewer dodge. Misses. All right, so now we're back at the bottom. This one's going. Orc four is once again going to try and spear Roy. Uh, Orc five is going to spear Dimitri. Dimitri, what are you doing? Shift into Krynos and spend a, a rage to claw at the nearest orc. Okay, at orc five, Soundwave is going to uh, spend a point of rage to bite. Orc four and dodge. Zeb, spend two no or uh, two rage. One will be to insta shift. One will be for an extra action. It'll just be two claw attacks. Okay, on who? Uh, I'll go for the one since I mean Dimitri just took you know got knocked down to in cap and is getting back up. I'll go for the ones attacking him. Or well, the one attacking him. Okay, Orc five. Yep. Kyle, uh, I will. Spend a rage, dodge, and claw orc one. All right. Orc one's gonna swing a sword at you. Orc two is going to arrow mark. Orc three is gonna arrow Cora. Roy? So this one I would like to do a r- leaping, what was it called? A leaping rake. Okay. Against orc four. Spend a point of rage to then claw at whichever orc was firing the arrows last. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to leap over the orc in front, attack him, and then land in front of one of the... Okay, um, that'd be a total of two rage then, because you need to spend the point of rage also for jumping. So it's jumping, attacking the orc four that's attacking you, and then a separate attack for orc three. And then if you're dodging, that's a... That would be total three rage. 
Orc 7 is going to sword Korra. Orc 9 is going to arrow Korra. And Orc 10 is going to arrow Zeb. Mark, what are you doing? I'm going to spend Rage to Dodge. And then I'm going to do... I'm going to go after Orc number two, the one who's shooting me. Mm -hmm. Um, With a bite attack. Let's spend another Rage to do another bite attack against that orc in case I don't kill him right off. Core? I'm going to claw at orc 7 and spend a point of rage for dodge. Okay. We'll attack orc 3 as well. Okay, that's one rollover on orc 1. Or orc 7, I should say. Roll damage. You got 3 on soak. All right, you did two damage, but Orc 7 is still up. That's fine. And then on to Orc 3? Yep. (laughs) All right, you just fuck up Orc 3. (laughs) Yeah. As you strike the first Orc as it kind of shifts around, and then you... uh, But then you move on to the next one as you grab Orc three with your claws, rake it down and smash it into the concrete before its head explodes. You notice that its body disappears and there's a shimmer on the floor in front of you. A shimmer? A shimmer. A floating nugget of light. Does it say loot? (laughs) (laughs) You'll have to find that out next turn. (laughs) Awesome. All right, Mark. Oh, you are taking one point of aggravated damage this turn, though, because of the poisoning. Right. Do I also get, a like, a rejuvenation roll or so, something? So, yeah. Roll stamina, diff 8. Okay. If you succeed, that means you will regenerate the one of the lethal damage. Ooh. Oof, you botched, so you can't regenerate for the rest of the scene. Never mind. All right, so now I got to Unless take... you want to use your mulligan. Yeah, I'll use my mulligan. This is kind of important. Yeah. Let's do that. Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind then, so I can't regenerate the rest of the scene. I'll take that lethal damage. Yeah, uh, you take that one egg, and now... One egg. egg, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's egg. All right, now roll your attack. All right, that's two rollover. Roll oh, damage. Uh, so it soaked it all. You'll have to make your second attack. Okay, so... There we go. As you leap it up, grab the orc by the head... You rend it as its neck breaks. It dissolves, and there's a nut, there's a glimmer in front of you as Orc Two is down. Does Mark see the glimmer in front of Korra? Yes. All right, Orc Ten shooting an arrow at Zeb, and was Zeb dodging? No, sir. So this is going to be face tank. All right. So uh, roll soak, please. Yes. As you take four points of lethal damage, and you see. In the corner of your eye, a little bar that shoots up with a violet color that starts to tick down very slowly. All right. All right, Cora, time to dodge. All right. Uh, roll soak, please. Hey. So four lethal damage and the same violet bar appears in your vision. All right, Cora, time to dodge again. As you just dodge out of the way to all of you, what it appears to be is the sword grows huge. It swings at Korra, and as Korra jumps away, it looks like the blade just touches her but and passes through, doing no- nothing. All right. Uh, Roy, I need a strength athletics roll, difficulty three. Actually, can I go ahead and spend a willpower? I'm only... Because I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing this at the beginning of my turn and not halfway through it. I'd like to uh, change my target for my second Rage Claw from Orc 3 that's already dead to Orc 10 that shot Zeb. Sure. Spend a point of willpower and roll willpower difficulty 8, please. Okay. It does not go. All right. So you will have to still leap at the other one. Okay. You, you will make that jump. So now roll your attack roll. All right, as your claw goes through, as you rake the claw through the orc, and it dies. As you land, and as the other orc goes down, you swing, and you 
uh, maul empty air since its body, body had dissolved. Alright. Orc 1 coming in to sword up Kyle as it runs up with its sword and it misses. Alright, Kyle, claw Orc 1, please. It's all a rollover. Best roll of the night. <laughs> As you go in and you just claw the face off the orc, its body dissolving away and a shimmer where its body once was. All right, Zeb. I will spend a will pardon the gate wound penalties. All right. And first claw to hit. All right. As uh, orc uh, orc number five is gone. It's dead. All right. All right, uh, Soundwave is going to spend a point of willpower and change her action in an attempt to attack Orc number seven. She succeeds, and nothing. So, all right, Dimitri? Kai spends a willpower to negate the wound penalties and also change my target. You can only spend one t- willpower per turn, so you can only... Oh, okay. So... All right. If you want to change your action, you'll still have to roll willpower to fate, though. Okay. I, I guess I'll change my action, then. All right. You get to change your attack. All right. I'll still shift into Krynos, uh, okay. but I'm going to go ahead and try to hit Orc 7. All right. Roll your attack. Okay. And then, since I can't cancel out my wound penalty, that would be a negative 5 to the pool. Yes. Um, okay. You can roll to heal first, I think. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to roll to heal oh. first. Roll your stamina yes. to fate. Okay. Oof. Uh, so you did not... Do you want to spend a mulligan chip? Yeah, I'll spend that mulligan chip. Okay. So you do heal yeah. one point of lethal, so you're at a minus two penalty, not a minus five. All right. That's a little bit better. Um, Three dice so yeah, better. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> I'll change my uh, attack to hit orc 7 if I didn't right. say that before. You did? So, okay. roll your attack. Alright, uh, you succeeded to roll over. Don't forget to p- also apply the minus 2 to your damage roll though. Okay. That you get 2 and I believe that one had been hurt before so you do take out orc number 7. Awesome. Cool. Alright, Dimitri, what are you going to do this round? There's orc 9 and 10. I am... Yeah, I'm going to... Sp- I'm going to attack orc number 9 and then spend a point of rage to attack number 10 and claw both. Okay. Soundwave is going to bite orc 9. Zeb? Yeah, I guess it'll be the same thing. That'll just be an attack to uh, against uh, orc number 9. Okay. Kyle? I'll claw 10. All right. Roy? I'm going to dodge. Okay. Orc 9, seeing Dimitri not dodging is going to swing a sword at him orc 10 is going to uh sword sound wave mark i'll spend one rage to give me another action to uh go attack the two remaining orcs there's only two orcs remaining now yeah so do you want to bite orc 9 and 10 yep cora can i use mother's touch real quick on mark you can yeah i'm gonna do that because he's hurting Mark, what is your hemp or permanent rage, whichever is higher? Three. Cora, intelligence, empathy, diff three, please. Okie dokie. Don't fuck Mm. up. Hey. So, Mark, you heal four points of damage. Woo. So that's all the ag gone, but you still got the three lethal. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, Bandage him up and send him back out. (laughs) Oh, because I still have to suffer those uh, damages still. Yep, because you can't regenerate them. Yep, uh, let's see, I already suffered the one the previous turn, so I still got two more to go. Yep, and so it's your turn, and you've taken another point of aggravated damage. Ah! <laughs> no big, I'm only on hurt now, so woo! <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm attacking now, yeah. Alright, that's all rollover. You destroy orc number nine. Bam. And then we're gonna go for the other one. Yep. Alright, you take out... Orc number 10 as well as it drops. There are th- I believe there are three shimmers. Wow. Well, two hearts, when you got hit by that arrow, did something show up in your vision? Yeah, but I kind of ignored it. Okay. Well, 
So did I, and I'm got one ag. Indicator. One ag, as oh. the bar empties on you, Mark. <laughs> as you do oh, see, the bar's empty. Yeah, as you see Mark standing there, and you just see this grievous wound rip across his chest. Jesus. Uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> oh, I've used my mother's touch for the day. <laughs> Grumbles and moans in his hispo form. <clears throat> Pick up the shimmer. As you touch one of the shimmers, in your hand appears something, and in your vision as you hold it, it says Mauve Moss, and it has a little arrow next to it in your hand. What's the arrow do? If you press the arrow, it switches to a description, as it gives a lengthy description of the Marshes of Despair, which this moss is commonly found from. It is harvested to end poison effects to Wonderful. those who eat it. <laughs> I, uh, I found an item that cures poison. All right, let's pick up another shiny. As you grab yeah. the shiny, core in your hand forms a shield. It's a wooden shield that says Fallen Hero's Shield, and it's got a little arrow in your vision when you hold it. What does the arrow say to me? When the lost revenant of the holy city once fought Battling despair and the forces of darkness, looking, of course, for the shadowed soul, it used this simple shield to defend itself against all evil. For beware, it is dangerous to go out alone. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. I now have a shield. I guess Mark will go to one of his shinies. Mark, you touch the shiny, and you have an ether flask. It seems t that the ether flask is blessed by the divine goddess to allow health to regenerate. It can only be replenished at watering holes. Look, I can regenerate now, can I? Out of out of scene? We're yeah, out you of could combat. regenerate out of combat, yes. Right, so I don't need to use this yet. Yes. So. Alrighty, cool. Soundwave goes, well, this is fucking brilliant. This is Quite literally a video game, I think. <laughs> what what better way to defend your information from Garu? How many Garu do you think actually play video games? Pretty smart. Not fucking many. I imagine mostly glass walkers. Yeah. Yep. Well, still yeah, the open? Yeah, the gate opened, yeah. You're, you're able to move. Okay, so I guess we keep going. If this All right, is... as you go back to the crossroad, there's still the one that goes, I guess what was originally the position of going straight, and that one seems to lead into a larger room, and then the one to the initial right position that goes forward and then bends north. Somebody asked that the way north looks a little bit more traversed, something yes, like that. that is remember. what Kyle saw. We should, we should listen to him now, because we got in that combat because of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. North it is. As you move north, you enter the large room as you see a creature that doesn't seem to notice you. It is a floating cube with stalks with 12 mouths with one giant mouth in the center and a single eye below it looking around. Lovely. As the creature looks over and moves as all the mouths speak in unison, what, what was, was the, the defendant class of, of the viewer in Labyrinths and Lamia, 2nd edition, point eight five? As Soundwave goes, oh, I know that! Negative one! <laughs> As it nods and you notice that a candlestick appears out of the wall and the creature vanishes into the floor. Mark's just gonna say, oh, thank Gaia you knew that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, if it's anything like the game, that thing's nasty. It has several different kinds of vomit that all do different effects. And I'd hate to see what it actually does to my body in this world and not in some sort of, you know, stupid pen and paper game. As she walks over and pulls the lamp stick or the candlestick on the wall and you notice that the wall shifts over and turns and it is a bookcase with a single book that is shimmering with a golden glow. As they're walking over to the briefcase with the book with book the golden case. glow. The bookcase. Book <laughs> like, Mar Mark's just going to try to comment on her, her. Oh, yeah, it's really scary in game kind of comment. Have you ever faced a Nexus crawler? In person? No. No. 
Well, imagine something kind of like that. <sighs> as you grab the book, and the book opens, as you see a holograph of Drone Master, she has significantly less cybernetic implants. This is my first look into moving across the umbralscape of the Near Realms. I am Drone Master. It is my belief that there is still a pure weaver spirit hiding somewhere in the Umbro. One that came before the Weaver's Madness and is still untouched. Possibly still, though, connected to the one song, but because it has not been reprogrammed, it is unable to change. I want to use this creature for it might be the key to creating the perfect cyber fetish, and that could actually lead us down the road to redeeming the Weaver. This journal will continue. I plan on moving across the most logical options in my journey. I will first be going to Pangea, where it is a representation of the world before the fall in many ways. <sighs> I hope this works. And if it does, then I will be of a great assistance to Vanderlinden, and he will be able to present it to the tribe. This is Drone Master signing off. August 18th, 2015. And the data, the book closes. Well, the date of this entry suggests this information might be a little bit too far from significance of what we're looking for. Is Vander Linden famous enough for us to know who he is or need to roll for that? Uh, I'll have you roll for that because you're not a... If you were a glass walker, a glass you would walker. know, but Fair you're enough. not a glass walker. Yep. That, uh, could, I don't know if that falls under a call. What would he? What would it fall under to know who that might be? I guess it would technically fall under Garu lore, but you guys haven't really spent anything in that. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do intelligence without any help. All right, that'll be a diff eight then. Sounds good. Ah, uh, not a botch uh, though. Not a botch. Not a botch. Perfect balance. That's all. Does anyone know be. who that is? The sound wave goes. Yeah, Gabriel Vanderlinden. He. He's from, I believe, the Netherlands. He's he's a glass walker. He's the founder of the Cyber Dogs. Him and his pack. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah, obviously this is before her fall, if one took place. Yeah, seems, seems in line with some of the ethos of the camp. So, this is good. This is good, right? Hey. Oh, absolutely. Just, well, don't get your hopes too high up of course it's right as she was beginning her journey and those kinds of journeys can lead you to many places sure as the room then you notice that the room actually has two doorways one that continues straight on and one that goes to the right of you should we check the floor and see which one is more worn all right as you start looking it looks like the one to the north is the most worn one which would you like to do would you like to go straight Towards the worn path or the unworn path? I say worn, worn path. path. Yeah, uh, yeah, worn path. And so you continue on, moving along the hallways that once again are cramped and seem to be at odd dimensions of exactly five feet wide and possibly ten feet tall. Everything looking rather cubish in a way as it snakes along twists and turns before you see another room up ahead. The room is a beautiful jungle with a waterfall. This is cer something certainly odd to see in a cyber room. I guess we'll go in. Cora, as you go in, as you are the first one in, four red dots appear on your chest as you hear kind of a crackling noise from the trees as you briefly see an overly tall creature wearing some sort of mask with long wispy hair as there's a strange mechanical gun on it before it disappears and vanishes. Fantastic. <laughs> Do the red lights vanish with it? No. No? Cool, cool. As um... you hear in the distance... Get to the airplane! I'll look around. Is there an airplane anywhere that I see? There isn't. You'll have it as the thing seems to be waiting for something. It's a good thing I've only seen one of these movies. 
I mean, I, I got something. Oh, I think I know what this is here. Since we're in like this nerdy simulation, this this looks like Barnold's Nager Swartzen's Hunter movie. That's exactly what this is. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully we don't run into the crossover event. Hunter versus ex extraterrestrial. Oh, that was a that was a scary one. Yeah. Out of Maybe. character, that's the only one that I saw. <laughs> I am so sorry. Hey, if it bleeds, we can kill it. <laughs> As it vanishes, and she's like, I think we have to beat it in a game of cat and mouse. Just like the movie. I don't like being the mouse. Let's play along. <laughs> what? Can anybody describe what this thing looks like? Well, if I remember from the movies, looks like a... Uh, it's a large creature with a metallic like mask when the mask is revealed its flowing locks blow behind it as you see its 10 mandibles the famous line from the movie is of course you are one hideous son of a bitch <laughs> i'm liking this session <laughs> mark will give that description to uh roy a little bit excitedly with his teenage He's like, yeah, this is a movie I saw. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and use Pulse of the Prey. Okay. You activate Pulse of the Prey, and you get the sense of where it is. Well, if this is a game of cat and mouse, it's the mouse right now, because I know where it's at. Good job, Mindscape. I think Barnold would be proud. As you get to it, the creature appears as you see it's tr uh, basically a small trident released from its wrist guards. As it comes at you, and you guys fight, you beat it. Once thoroughly defeated, its body, it starts tapping on its wristband, and you see strange numbers start to count down as you hear a plane in the distance. Oh, I th this is the part where we run, guys. All right, let's run. <laughs> yeah, lead the way. As you guys start rushing through, running out, you narrowly miss some pit traps with spikes throughout the jungle before you get to an airplane the plane lifts off and you see a small nuclear explosion go off beneath you as the plane crash lands and you end up back in a labyrinthian style area the jungle behind you and a bookcase in front well that was really exciting another uh, shiny book yep and so you get to it as you open it up and it says January 2nd 2020 there might be other avenues to take since this journey. As you know from previous records, the evolution of my theories, I think it is time that the cyber dogs begin to look into the deep and high umbra for our next steps. For it is said, of course, in legends that the cyber realm was actually in the deep umbra long ago before humanity's discovery of technology drew it into the near realm so may, may there be other realms that we can use to pull in other weaver spirits to perfect the garu condition and perfect our desires as we will continue our research on the perfect cyber fetish we will be truly efficient and all of us united in hand we will be able to use these cyber fetishes to not only redeem the Weaver, but to promote Gaia and her evolution. All things change, and it has always been the Garu and now the Cyber Dogs who will lead her into this next stage of life. Uh, Kyle will have watched Soundwave's face during this. She doesn't seem overly bothered she seems to be thinking it in more theoretical terms see it doesn't look like there's been a fall yet it's talking about now umbral theoretics with technological advancements theoretics yeah the theories of how near realms are formed the theories of deep umbra connections to gaia and the triad which one has more power where how this can be used to promote the evolution of near realms and thus promote the evolution of gaia so that she can survive and even thrive against attacks from the worm i guess it just sounded a lot more concrete to me 
You know how scientists are, once they get their pet theory in their head, sometimes they treat it like it's fact when uh, it hasn't been fully tested yet. I know I'm guilty of that, and I d though it shames me to say so. No, no, I suppose we're all that way, even if you're not a scientist. Once we've decided, oh, it was this that caused this thing to happen, until you see otherwise, it, it's hard to shake that initial assumption. Yeah, exactly. As the area then, there's a single hallway to the right of you. Onward. Onward it is. As you start going, you hear the clash of something, like metal against metal. It sounds like some fun's already started. Keep going. As you move, the hallway splits into three again, one going to your left, one going straight ahead, and one going to the right. The sound you're hearing is coming from your right. Let's go right. As you go right, move down a little bit as they get louder, louder and louder and louder, and you have to take another left. As you take a left, it goes into an open room as you see several strange, tiny lizard people fighting someone as she's got a sword, armor, as she starts taking them out as she kills the last one. And she wipes the blade down. And she looks over. Are you... As she turns and looks, and she looks over at Soundwave. Cyber dogs. As she looks, and she looks weary, her hands clutching the blade. Not all of us know spirit, but Soundwave here is. Not a spirit, you fucking idiot. And she goes, Soundwave... Yeah, I figured she was. Judging by the cybernetics I saw, pretty fucking easy to see. Well, if you're not cyber dogs, why are you working with them? Who's asking? My name's Elizabeth. I'm part of the random interrupts. My name's Zeb. I'm Alpha of the Ill Omens. And we're looking for stuff. What brings you here? I'm also looking for stuff. I don't know if I feel comfortable saying it if you're that cozy with cyber dogs over there. No offense. See, some of them have fallen. <laughs> some of them? Sounds like you got more information than we do. Soundwave looks upset. What are you talking about? We're just trying to, yeah, 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 save the weaver through cybernetics. We've all heard the fucking speech. Look, she looks like she's too down the totem pole to actually do anything of significance, but the cyber dogs are a growing faction in my tribe. And I would like them to stop growing. Because, quite frankly, I've seen you guys at moots. You're more likely to summon a weaver spirit to preside over a moot than a Gaian spirit. Anyway, I'm looking for stuff. And if you help me, I'll be happy to give you more info. And she looks at Soundwave. And maybe you're not a lost cause. As Soundwave goes, I have no problem sh trying to find information with you. The cyber dogs have done... Nothing wrong. We're simply trying to heal the Weaver and save Gaia, just like anyone else. You sound like a country Garu with your suspicions of us. As a bookcase forms behind Elizabeth. Well, that's how we've been getting our information. Same Let's here. Ahead. I've been Let's diving into research, it. too. I just got here from the research section. Besides so far, she's talked about other realms possibly looking into the deep Umra, other places to find the perfect form of the Weaver. What's research shown you? Her research that I found so far is that she has gone to the Scar to look for Weaver Spirits and another record about her going to the Abyss and actually climbing into the mouth of the Abyss trying to find a calcified Weaver Spirit from the dawn of time. Shall we see what this one is? Let's have a look. She pulls open the book. As you see Drone Master appear, she's in simpler, more like uh, animal hide-like garb. As she goes, Pangea is such a strange realm. There are ephemeral people here, and there are Karens here in the Near Umbra, defended by Garu who have no more connection to the physical world. It's hard, mm, very hard to think about my where I came from and Recall Cockroach, as all Garu here only have one totem. Wolf, I was ch chasing down a lead, but had to dodge two dinosaurs to make sure that I didn't get eaten. But the only spirit of any significance here is the Great Serpent around the volcano. 
it makes me feel uncomfortable, doubly so because as I come into this realm, all my cybernetics stop functioning. There's no weaver spirit here of consequence. I've been here now for two months and I have to get back to the physical world, otherwise my physical body will die and I'll only be a spirit. I will continue this journey and I am hoping to look into the scab next. One, the realm is safer for long-term visits, and two, it does have connections to the Weaver. <sighs> maybe, maybe it is all in the Cyber Realm, but that will be my last search. I want to look in places that are unconventional. It is only through the press pushing of our limits and thinking outside of our own limitations that we can truly reach technical excellence and evolve our understanding of the world. This is Drone Master, September 15th, 2016. Well, she certainly pushes boundary and limit going to the Scar. Places a wasteland of worm and weaver construction. Haze of toxin and chaos. As Elizabeth goes, that's true. Be interesting why she tried to find a purified weaver spirit there unless she thought something I can't understand. Soundwave then chimes in. Who knows, maybe she thought it was because she could follow umbral tethers from the scab to potential anchor heads. Remember, the theories. All Neo Realms originally existed in the outer umbra, in the deep umbra. Sure. Keep telling yourself that, Elizabeth says, as she gives kind of a distasteful sneer. Well, the last entry mentioning the scar was from January last last year so maybe she did find something there hmm. maybe she did though i haven't seen any perfect fetish be touted by the cyber dogs and they're not quiet about their discoveries well regardless in this sound wave is right it doesn't matter whether the theories are right or not drone master believed them at least at this time well we still need more information we still haven't found what we're looking for no, I found some stuff in research. I haven't explored all of it. I'm not familiar with all the stupid fucking game she's into. I've explored about half this place. Well, she keeps mentioning presenting work to this... to the Cyberdoc founder. Maybe if we went and explored that labyrinth. Perhaps Gabriel van der Linden might be what we need. Let's at least finish our work here, to be sure. As you guys move around... Um, there are several more rooms as you do fight several smaller spirits, some in the shape of goblins, some sentient plant creatures, and the like. Before, and all the entries are about the same, it's about her searching failed searches, additions to her theory, and her coming closer to the belief that the cyber realm is the truest nature of the weaver and possibly a chance to find a pure representation of the weaver in any near realm right now, but she becomes more and more suspicious that there will have to be ventures into the high realm where ideas are born, or their ideas spirits are born, or the deep umbra, where concepts that haven't even been discovered or thought up yet exist. Well, this is a lot of information with no ties to just what appears to me just typical glasswalker nature. You, you notice Elizabeth give Mark a side eye uh, no offense, Rhea. I'm Foster only. Tribal prejudices. This has given us friend of mine experience. I think we need to go back to some of the research or things that be presented to Vanderlinden, and, and maybe our friend Lauren here can help us for the rest of that. We need evidence. Otherwise, this is just someone recounting something in their diary. Agreed. And so, you guys find the mural that you originally came from and jump out as you're back into the room. Here's what I found so far on her research, just so you know. As she brings out, like, they're like little, like, USBs. It looks like she's created several items. These are several items she, she found in the Cyber Realm. And specific functions and purviews of Spider Lords. Uh, this one here is a headset that requires this sort of Weaver Spirit. And this fetish here is a chainsaw clave idea. Anything about a cybernetic arm? 
No, but I haven't checked every file. I was starting to get worn down. I didn't know all the answers to the questions, and there were too many protection daemons for one Garu to get past. Well, that shouldn't be a problem any longer, and that's, well, as far as I know, one of the more recent fetishes. Okay. We can start diving in if you want. i say so. And so you jump into the portrait of research. It's once again labyrinthian. Elizabeth points out the rooms that she has been into. You notice that this one also has a hallway that ends abruptly, but there are wares on the floor leading to it, as if someone walked up to this place. Well, following the worn footsteps and the evidence there seems to have not done us too wrong, so I say we continue doing that. As you get to the wall, the wall seems solid, and Soundwave thinks to her Times Gaming, and she goes, Elizabeth, can I have your sword real quick? And she takes the sword, and she hits the wall, and the wall disappears. An illusion in an umbral illusion. Well, everything in the umbra is real. It's just crafted by Drone Master to confuse Garu. Once again, how many Garu play video games? Well, I can't say I've touched one in quite a while. Most go through the first change before they really get into gaming, too. Well, never really had one, only saw it on the commercials. Uh, as you walk through, and this place seems a little more high-tech, so to speak. There are filing cabinets and things like that. As you move through, you see something else. It's an out-of-place pipe as this horrific plant monster reaches out, biting monstrously before crawling back in. Out of place pipe with a hurt. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I was just thinking out loud. So, out of character, I, I know many of these references, and I even know a thing you can do with this pipe out of character, but there's no way in hell that Kyle knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I don't I'm certain that Dimitri doesn't, and <laughs> yeah, does that make sense? Like I'm, <laughs> yeah. I just don't know who might even know. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the Super Mario <laughs> reference, but how many of us, you know, deadbeats actually know what the hell we're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I almost want to say that I would know because I changed pretty late in comparatively speaking. That's like true. I was like, I think it would be Roy or Cora who would know. Oh. So, Cora, you'd know that you could possibly walk down the pipe when the plant creature isn't visible. It's true. Yeah, so I will I will pass along the information. Like, you gotta wait for the plant creature to go into the pipe and not be seen. And then we can, I think we can go down. So you just want us to run at the plant monster? No, no, you wait for the plant monster to disappear. And then we jump into the pipe. But won't the plant monster still be in the pipe? Generally not in the game. All right. Well, I'll go I first. Mean, I'll, <laughs> I was going to say, I could go first since I... We'll demonstrate two hearts. Gave the, gave the plan. Demonstrate to us two hearts. All right, sure. As Corey see the plant crawl back into the pipe, it's a looming darkness now. Awesome. As soon as the plant uh, is like completely gone, I will boop, right as in. You, as you run in and all of you guys hear this weird sound. <laughs> and after a few moments, you see the plant creature crawl out as if there was nothing in its way, biting and snarling before crawling back in. Uh, all right, uh, then. One at a time, I guess. And so you do so as you are in this huge computer room. Tons of screens, all filled with experimentations. You see things like the crafting of cyber fetishes and things like that. However, you do find something interesting. It is a several updates about uh, cybernetic enhancements. As you see Drone Master going, unfortunately, several of the subjects have passed. As you see this kind of wolf body covered in cybernetics as you notice the report has details on what failed um including enhancements to lungs skeletal tissue 
nano muscular enhancements, visual acuity sensors, and increased bite, bite capacity cybernetics that had nanobots that would leak down silver onto the teeth, allowing those Garu to deal additional silver damage. But it seems that the nanites failed and pumped silver directly into the bloodstream, causing the wolf's entire circulatory system to wither and burn from the inside. Great guy, they're experimenting on wolves. Jesus. This is no uh, different than the work of Apple. And yeah, you'll just turn like, Lauren, your people have lost their minds and lost the way of Gaia. You Lauren, have a choice Lauren, to make. Lauren throws up her hands and goes, Are you sure they're wolves and not lupus born? Is that difference? What, the, what difference, what difference, difference does it make? No, what if they volunteered? If they chose this. A lupus born volunteering? There are lupus or, born glass walkers, if you can believe it. I know you get her so fucking simple minded that you think anything with two legs has to be a glass walker, but. There are lupus born who have open minds and don't believe in that purity shit your tribe espouses. Why don't you take a look, Foster, and see if these are volunteers or subjects because they've fallen so far. There is no data on whether they volunteered or not. Is there any connection we can make with this? Are you joking? And this is an abomination. They are experimenting on members of the Gru Nation, whether they're kin or volunteers. It's disgusting. As you see, Elizabeth putting in a drive and going If they volunteer, yes, this is sad, but it is a cyber dog ritual to create your own cybernetics. What if those Garu created their own cybernetics and they failed? Well, let me keep digging. As you can I get a perception empathy from you, Zeb? Sure. What's a diff Keegan? Four. She can't cover her emotions well. Though Soundwave was passionate towards Korra, you notice that there's a ton of doubt, and she is clearly shaken. This is a crossroads, Soundwave. We have to find evidence. We have to know more. I agree. I agree. How do we get more? She... It looks like she did basic cloud security protocols. You don't... You don't leave all your sensitive information in one place you spread it out that's why i bet you there's multiple folders hidden throughout these other folders and that they're there that you have to search in different places and look for certain places and look through different things to try and find these folders right because if you had them all in one place all you have to do is one lucky hacker and then the whole thing is revealed whether or not it's good or bad if the worm found this and they were able to perfect these cybernetics, could you imagine a black spiral dancer that could summon silver teeth on a whim without a gift? I'd rather not. That's why the plans for these teeth aren't fully integrated in this folder. I bet you they're elsewhere. Is there a subject name? Something we could maybe pursue? A thread? That one leaps to my mind. They it's all mentioned have in multiple places. They have numbers. We can we can take down the numbers and try and cross compare. Out of character, Keegan, help me out here. The cybernetic wolf, that's not like a body sitting in front of us that we can look at, right? It's behind her in the video. Okay. While they're looking up that thread, um, I kind of want to like go over to Elizabeth, like, what you're downloading? And she goes, all of it. All of it? Mm-hmm. What exactly are you looking for? Like I said, evidence to stop a cyber dog takeover of the tribe. Random interrupts are in charge. I'm going to keep it that way. Because we know how to fight the worm. We use the wild and the weaver to interrupt the damages of the worm. We make sure to balance all three. Cyber dogs focus too much on the weaver side of things. We're Gaian still. As Elizabeth goes done as she pulls out the USB. This looks like this is the one hidden folder here. I think we should move on. Fair enough. As you leap out back into the main room, you still have Personal, The Machine Messiah, Gabriel Vanderlinden, Spirit Index, and Network Designs. Want to check out Machine Messiah? That does sound rather foreboding based on what we've looked at. It just yeah. seemed too obvious. As you guys enter that, you find yourself on the deck of a spaceship. 
There is a large map of star systems all around with several members around typing. You see a strange alien turtle as well as a taller alien with a cleft um, jaw and a green alien with head um, petals. What are they doing? Oh, they're just moving around talking. They, they're just standing around. Whoever gets, we'll say whoever gets closest to the petal one will be, uh, we'll say that's um, uh, Mark. As the petal-headed one goes, ah, Commander Herder. Yes, of course. I'm Commander Herder. What can I do for you? We're looking for a console to look up information. Commander, your personal console is by the star map. You can look up emails about the impending harvester attacks. Ah, of course. Thank you. And I'll kind of turn my head to the other As her, her face goes angry, he didn't say he should go! Attack him! As the whole crew turns with guns. Oh my gosh, no, I don't, no, no, no. <laughs> as you all shift into Krynos and you get through a bloody battle. Woo! As there are bodies Woo! layered Woo! everywhere. I was a harvester spy the entire time. <laughs> anyway, I, you know, the final blow on the last enemy is given and I'll let loose a sigh and I'll go. Well, anyway, we could get information from this console over here. We cry over the dead body of Yara. As you get to the console, you'll need to do a Gnosis roll, diff four. It's like entering a console into the actual computer web here. As you all pass through, as you see this devastated temple with a giant crab spaceship launching laser beams from its claws in the distance. As you see plant people screaming and being vaporized and horrible cybernetic mutations that are zombified attacking people as you see the statue before you. We could check the temple or we could ensue in a giant epic battle with the uh, giant crab. Let's check the temple. Let's check the temple. As you approach the temple and you see a little ball appear as... It forms into another strange alien before it shifts into an actual video of Drone Master. It's stirred. As you see this massive, almost empire state building sized, almost robot. Upon closer inspection, you notice that it's built, its body is crafted of plates and each plate contains every form of technology humans have ever created and have imagined. It stirs, it's awakening. The Great Incarna, the Machine Messiah. I suspect that this creature will be the avatar of the Weaver in the coming apocalypse. Some say Zizak is the, is the coming Incarna of the Worm, but they always forget that the Worm has three heads. It is not a unified front. Zizak is the head of the Beast of War. Gaia protect us when the Eater of Souls is released from Malfis, or worse yet, the Defiler chooses a champion. But this, this creature, if we can purify it, if we can make our technology part of it, that may be the final step to curing the Weaver and saving Gaia from the worm. As you see the eyes flicker on of the huge machine, as you see a blast of blue lights that are all consuming, as you see the machine move and shake and look, as she goes, it's, as before it repositions itself and goes back to sleep. The machine messiah will awaken and it will be the cyber dogs there to greet it it'll be the cyber dogs to make sure that it's an instrument for gaia if they awaken that spirit and fail in their goal what do you think would happen it's a good the, question the unleashing the, yeah cora this reminds you of something because morgan brought it up to you it may not be something that is directly tied any more or important but you mentioned seeing a great machine with glowing blue eyes trying to grab Roy when she did her visions at the Steel Mountain almost a year ago. I know this might be a little bit painful, but Morgan actually talked about something um, similar to this, and she'll go on to explain um, 
like the what what Morgan had seen and what she had expressed to Cora. Yeah, it um, inspired you all got to go back to the meditation room. And that's when you had mm. your vision of the shadow creature that tried to grasp you with Malcolm lying there dead. Well, that's just great. This is another piece. They're willing to experiment. They're willing to tap into things they shouldn't. Tempt things that would guide them. There has to be something else. A little bit more. I think we're close. I think we're confirming our suspicion, though. But we shouldn't be too biased. Concrete, indisputable proof, if it happened. This, though, I don't know if it gives us any evidence of a fall. Certainly, it gives us evidence of a foolish decision. Foolish decision that could cause the apocalypse to start. Sound wave boys. The weaver isn't the start of the apocalypse. It's the worm, though. This is just a way to try and defend it. I agree that the decision is ill-advised, though. Definitely the future I see before me is apocalyptic in scale with this thing. All right, she makes a point that we need to find... So we need findings. We need something that's concrete. I don't think her... I think the personal things that she's kept will give us a frame of mind. I think we need to look at this other file. Vanderlinden. Let's and see go. what's been put out and published. All right. As you go into the Vanderlinden one, and this one actually seems to be the least defended. It's several movie theaters, and going through them, they're movie theaters of very long lectures about the theoretical nature of the triad, about the Weaver. Do, do spirits evolve from thought, such as the high concept spirits of war, love, things like that? Or do those spirits inspire the emotions and the cultures that draw upon the iconography of the spirits and that simply some spirits were drawn to certain peoples around the world or cer certain locations? There's also talk about the idea that perhaps all technology ever to exist is created by men and thus creates spirits or alters existing spirits. An almost theory of spiritual stem cells, technology spirits of the future that are actually amorphous in the deep umbra that do not take form until the technology is discovered. And once discovered, those stem cells essentially adapt to create stronger spiritual impressions of existing theorems and technology. The lecture goes on to how, how the cyber dogs can use this in an attempt to forge their own spiritual army of weaver spirits to combat the madness of the weaver and better yet, combat the worm. There's also metaphysic ideas of what happens with the combination of unlike spirits to create what he calls radical distortion effects or sometimes known as the paradox principle to create an item of pure weaver construct and bind to it a wild spirit for in most technological cases binding a wild spirit to a computer and things like that causes the laptop to cease to function even if the wild spirit is beaten to submission but sometimes the laptop does something unexpected such as exploding with the same force as a plastic explosive. And so it becomes the question of, can cyber dogs use these underlying principles to create new unexpected weapons or to magically enhance potential technological items used by Pentex employees so that when they turn on their computer, their computer explodes for no fucking reason. But all of these lectures are played straight. There are no hidden rooms and it's hours upon hours upon hours of deep lectures, theorems, the mathematics of spirits, the spirits of mathematics, and the combination of principles to derive what he calls the Gaian theorem of fetish creation. I was gonna lose interest in this pretty quick. Like, <laughs> he, he will spend most of his time searching for secret rooms that aren't there and okay. not necessarily just listening in to this. Okay. So, but yeah, it does take several hours until finally you find there's just nothing. Nothing here, nothing out of the ordinary. It seems like this folder was intentionally kept clean so that snoopers wouldn't find anything incriminating. What's left? Personal? 
I think it's time we move on to the personal folder. What, 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 Network what designs. Network designs and spiritual index. Uh, Scudder Spike mentioned something, didn't he? Didn't he talk about having an index that they were maintaining back at the cairn of every spirit, some kind of massive umbral catalog? You're right, that could be what we want. Oh, it's in the Fool's Air, and I was wrong about the lecture series. <laughs> <laughs> Off and away. I suppose if you had findings, but that, that's what I'm trying to get at, Kyle, is findings. We could try the index, we could try personal. Mm -hmm. Out of character, could we possibly, like, split up to cover ground and save time? You could do that. If we're going to split up, let's not do personal until last. Because if there was going to be something that was just defended, I imagine it would be personal. So, you guys do that. Those subject numbers are not in this database, but once again, it is like a dungeon or a labyrinth and Lamia style dungeon with various creatures, including reptile people in this one. But you do find another hallway that's very similar to one of the other ones as you swing a sword and it once again reveals a hidden room with, a, with two chests. Mark opens one. Uh, left or right? Right. As you grab the right one, your hands stick to the chest as the chest opens a gaping maw and legs form and arms as they grab around you and they pull you in and chomp. Mark, you take th you take four points of lethal damage as you just feel crunch, crunch, crunch. I am wounded and ah! <laughs> yeah, Kyle will run over and try and murder the chest <laughs> you swing at the chest and the chest the chest's lithe thin body expands into mega muscles as it opens its mouth and pulls out a great sword as you hear a strange orchestral music start to just sound around you the blade is also silver you guys fight you win but it it ends bad i'm just gonna just do a D4 uh, down the line to see how much ag you guys took. Kyle, Elizabeth, and Soundwave went down this one, and Mark went down this one. So, Kyle, one ag. Mark, three ag. Um, mm, I want to take my potion. Okay. Yeah. Sound Soundwave, one ag. Elizabeth, two ag. Meanwhile, in the, um, network designs you notice that this contains several database keys of all information that the cyber dogs have collected there is so much information here that just sticking your head into the pool of raw data that is in the form of these pillars of data fills your brains with about 10 years worth of information per second at such rapid speeds that you cannot retain almost any of it however you do find a f hidden folder here once again which has proof of concept moot on summoning greater and greater weaver spirits to preside over it and how summoning weaver spirits can actually uh, not only change the nature of a karen so that, that it is more resilient to urbanization and can actually grow stronger in an urban environment, thus creating a way to enter the Umbra safely for glass walkers. It also seems to be a way to try and um, keep ties with local city spirits that are tied to the Weaver, allowing easier transition while in the cities and for bane hunting. I guess we take what we got and regroup. All right, uh, at the other chest, Kyle, are you going to open the other chest out of curiosity? Uh, well, first, going to look to see if there's any wear on the floor at all. <laughs> there is and wear on the was. floor. Uh, a lot of it around the chest that Mark opened, because they like to walk around. Okay, but the other one doesn't have that wear. Correct. And that's that's enough to make me feel like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> not the same amount. <laughs> As you open it... And you see this lupus struggling and snarling as you see several high-level glass walkers, including Drone Master, holding them down. As you hear the Garu going, I am Death, Death Stalker of the Red Talons. You let me go, go. 
as it's put under and you see the scalpel go in, as you see glowing success, as you see the red talon in agonizing pain, its bottom jaw fully cybernetic, its body covered in blades, as the creature, st she goes, we have done it. We have fused one of the tribes most closely associated with the wild, with the weaver. This has created some instability, but this, but we can likely attribute that to Griffin's unruly nature. The Red Talon is a worm-killing beast. We were able to capture a Black Spiral Dancer and place it into the same room with the Red T Talon. The Red Talon destroyed it with ease, using the Silver Blades almost instinctively. It's almost admirable, and it is something that we must instill in the Glasswalkers. Instinct, because he can use instinct to improve our technology as she turns and you see the uh, the red talon. I cannot take this, this abomination as it's the blade comes out and you see some Glasswalkers backing away thinking it's about to break through and kill, attack them as it turns the blade onto its throat and you just see the slice and the blood go everywhere as the Red Talon collapses and reshapes into lupus, twitching wildly as it dies, cutting its own spinal cord and severing all cybernetic connections to its brainstem. Io will turn and look at Soundwave. Shock and horror. Pure, unadulterated horror. I would say that this is the evidence we needed that they fell. As Elizabeth starts downloading the information, he goes, Yeah. I have a request. I think I'll need everyone around to hear my proposal, though. Of course. You also recognized one in the footage. It was Gabriel van der Linden, who was also working on the surgery on the Red Talon. Was Cuts Through Code there? Yes. There were several. There was at least five. Three of them you did not recognize. All cyber dogs, though. You assume. What, they had all... cybernetics in them. Okay, yeah. As you guys reconvene, you uh, the ones who are at the spirit index notice like the shaking shock on Soundwave's face. What did you find? Elizabeth goes this as she presses the thing on her USB and it projects the exact same video that they had just watched. Willing participants, huh? Somehow worse than I imagined. Mark is just silent with memories of the facility. As Elizabeth goes, we need to keep this under wraps until uh, March. The Promethe the, Prometheus, the Prometheus Days moot is then. I was going to present this to all glass walkers in Europe, and it would be filmed and sent to all glass walker moots. But it needs to be done in a way so that the cyber dogs, as she looks over at Soundwave, are left unaware. And Lauren becomes shocked as she just shakes her head and just, we, you guys have to let me, there are cyber dogs who like me aren't aware of this. This will be a purge of the cyber dogs. Innocent Garu are going to die if this gets out and her plan and Elizabeth's plan is fulfilled. I have to spread word quietly among the cyber dogs who are nothing like that, that abomination. And how would you know who is like that and who's not? If you didn't even know this existed. The ones who also didn't know, the younger ones, the ones who were drawn in by ideals, the ones who aren't part of the inner circle. Unless you're willing to let just Garu die willy nilly because they bought into ideals to leaders that didn't live up to them. Sounds like sacred well, yep. stone. Oof, yeah, I was about to say, oof, that hits home. <laughs> We What's also don't know how many Garu are being experimented similar, sim, similarly right now. Elizabeth goes, Do you consider something? We hide this for your people. What of the Red Talons? What of those who've been preyed upon for this in a diminishing population of our kin that are shrinking by the day? You want to keep this a secret to protect them. There's going to be a whole lot of no. other tribes that have a definite say in this. No, it's as, also all as, Cairn. As Soundwave goes, no, I want it to be released. Just give me time to pull away those who can be saved. It's fortunate there are Philodox that can do that for you. You think a Philodox will do that? We're Garu. And the, 
the glass walkers aren't going to just let this sit. The glass walkers are going to kill everyone because the glass walkers don't want to be associated with this. I don't want to be associated with this. And Elizabeth nods and goes, that is my point. I want the glass walkers to know about it first because at the end of the day, we're Garu and they'll blame my whole tribe for this. And it'll be a second war of rage unless the glass walkers take care of it ourselves. The Red Talons will scream for vengeance unless the Glass Walkers bring the heads of those who wronged them. It's only for, she looks at her watch, oh, one month. Time moves faster here. It's already February. If you talk and this gets out, it could get to Vanderlinden first. And then if he goes into hiding, this stain upon my tribe lasts forever and you risk another war of shame. The glass walkers will go out the way of the bunyip. The only difference is, is that we could have stopped it. And Soundwave goes, and there are cyber dogs who will get caught up in this and just be innocent victims of a Garu rage. It'll just be one tribe's rage, but they don't deserve to die either. Y you have to let me talk to at least some of them as Elizabeth shakes her head and goes, you can't be 100% certain that all of them aren't tainted. I'm sure a fair number of the ones that you talk to aren't, but you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. Well, it's lucky we have a Philodox here to make a clever judgment way on to, what to do. <laughs> way, way to shirk that responsibility and moral... <laughs> hey, she's no more responsibility. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not Alpha anymore. Hello, hello, Garth, hey, hello. Alpha, this is Buck. <laughs> I'm just gonna pass Buck to you. <laughs> Cause I got no idea. It's not meant to be an easy, easy answer, yeah. Cora. <laughs> you're, you're so welcome. I have a lot of opinions. As My always. first <laughs> is that I don't know how long we can wait. Drone Master and Cuts Through Code, two of the ones in that video, are at a Glasswalker Sept and are taking it over. Elizabeth goes, okay, I'm from a sept in near Washington, Washington, D.C. I can send some of my people there as an exploratory mission to help solidify the strength of the Glasswalker. This is Steel Mountain, right? They sent out a call months ago because all their stargazers left. We can yes. come in under the guise of that and help strengthen the non-cyber dog position while keeping this all quiet and keeping an eye on them so that they don't do this to any lupus in that region. It's but, something at least. But we need it to be quiet because if those cyber dogs get whiffed of any of this, can you guarantee me that they wouldn't resort to things like assassination or trying to brainwash my own companions with their cybernetics? That's why I need this to work. It needs to be a swift and decisive purge and for that to work none of them as she looks at soundwave can be made aware i'm sorry kid i'll keep you protected we'll hide you we'll even rip the cybernetic device out of you if we have to and we can get you to join a proper camp but we can't tell any of them some are going to get lost but i would rather lose what 50 60 maybe 70 innocent cyber dogs rather than the entirety of the Glasswalker tribe if this leaks out, or worse, Vanderlinden escapes and is able to keep the cyber dogs alive and then the Garu turn their ire on the rest of the Glasswalkers simply because they didn't do enough to stop them. How As... many cyber dogs are there, Lauren? The numbers are unclear. We don't keep very good numbers of those, surprisingly. I know we're, we were a growing faction, growing with some significant power. Maybe, maybe a few hundred globally. And she goes, guards low. There are, there are Cleoth who just finished the rite of passage and I helped encourage join the cyber dogs. If this purge happens and they have their cyber fetish, they will get murdered because I gave them bad advice. Because as I said, my elders didn't live up to the ideals they were espousing. And that's not fair to them. Here's a compromise, if both of you can hear me out. We were in, in tasked with finding out if Cyberdogs fell, and we have. 
and we have to take that back to the Cairn. But if we were to take back you as well and make these preparations and plans, I believe it might go more smoothly to have everyone be happy. As Elizabeth goes, I wouldn't be happy. As I said, she'd tell someone, and it might be a Cleoth who is good and is exactly that, and then it leaks. The fewer people who know, the less leaks you have. My goal is to make sure Vander Linden doesn't escape. He needs to be I mean, purged. I mean, you you have a conversation with the elder of the Cairn that we were instructed with to find out this information. I'm asking that you hide this from your elder or tell him to reach out to me directly. I have a cell phone number. He can look us up in the Glasswalker network. How difficult, she says, turning to Elizabeth, would it be to hunt down Vanderlinden? Could be very difficult. Cyberdogs have various locations throughout the cyber realm, and they have a closer relationship with the spider lords. It's unclear that if we have a falling out with the cyber dogs, if the, if the spider lords will side with us or side with the cyber dogs, mm. which means that the cyber dogs could have a fortress in uptown to send out agents and continue to recruit, continuing to rot my tribe from the inside. I will not have black spiral dancers of the weaver. I will not allow it. No one's asking you to allow that. I I was curious because as a compromise for you both to save those innocent Cleoth and to bring the guilty ones to justice, if we can get a hold of Vanderlinden, or if you could get a hold of Vanderlinden. Vanderlinden is an elder, and once again, I have to convince all the Glasswalkers at once with this evidence. I, if I try and attack Vanderlinden, and this evidence is not been presented, all it looks like is I am attacking an elder, and then that information could leak elsewhere. Vanderlinden has also got a pack of elders. I am Athro. There. I, however, I'm not going to pull rank to make this decision. I understand that this is a hard decision, and you helped me get here, so I want your opinions, but I am telling you right now the more people who are aware of the conspiracy mathematically means that the conspiracy will be made known faster and leak these leaks will prevent us from doing our goals and there is a chance that innocent cyber dogs will die regardless and vander linden will escape i am not willing to take that risk this camp has to be purged otherwise you've seen it I know you have. You've read the doc documents, how when one accused the Garel of being worm-tainted, the Garu turned on them. When the Bunyip were claimed to be tainted by the worm, the Garu turned on them. The Garu barely trust the Glasswalkers as is, and so if there's any chance to say they have fallen to the Weaver, the nation will turn on them. It will be a bloodbath, and you will lose Half the tribes who give you eyes and ears in the city. No, oh, I agree with you. We need to inform Leeds of Steel that his cairn is about to fall to the Weaver, and that people within his midst are doing so. We'll give him your number, and you will call him and tell him you have the evidence that this is true. We will hold out, I think, for one lunar month. Then the silent shadows will carry this message across the nation, and on your head be it, the fate of your people. Ask the silent shadows to spread it, as I said, after. Specifically after the Prometheus Day's moot of the Glasswalkers. That is where I will be presenting it. Look, you're Athro only, and I understand that. But because you're going to be presenting this information, you are in a unique position to mold how it comes out. What we have here, what we found, isn't evidence that the Cyberdogs are corrupted. It's evidence that the leadership is. When you give your presentation, give it with that in mind that they have been tricking, misleading our Cleoth and Fostern. I will do that. I will. I will. But I will say that you're more of an idealist than, than most to think that Garu can see nuance. It is all we can do. We have hard evidence that Six, 
here have fallen? Yes. I'm certain it's more. I'm sure you're right. I... I doubt you get to Athro or Elder and the Cyberdogs and not know about this. I doubt you get to Adrian and not know about it. Adrian is when we start to... I agree. Select for leadership. Soundwave, if you all will agree, you will be held by me and my Karen. You will not be able to escape. You will not be able to talk to others. You will be a lone wolf in our Karen. We will not mistreat you. But I can't... I can't trust that you won't let your emotions run wild and you'll try and do something stupid. Agreed? It's getting purged. It's getting purged. Lauren, is there any part of you that believes if you start spreading this that all of the cyber dogs won't be purged, including you? Just that they'd be able to hide until the rage simmered down. They'd be able to escape for a while do research more purely, be able to pr- do things through their actions to prove that not all of us were like like them. I think you've spent so much time among the cyberdogs that you've forgotten your Garu history. I mean, Elizabeth chimes in. The Red Talons have already tried to purge one, have already successfully purged one tribe from the roster. I'd rather they not get, be given an excuse to try and purge another. So then... There's one more consideration. That's that two separate groups at the same time were investigating this same thing. What do you think the chances are that there's no one else in the next month? Pretty good, actually. The cyber dogs are pretty pretty much in glasswalker circles, and right now most glasswalkers are preparing for the, the moot because they want to present their ideas. And what's happening is most of the Glasswalkers are trying to position themselves through achievements to being the face of the tribe. I don't know if you know this, but the Glasswalkers name has changed throughout the centuries. And those name changes sometimes corresponded with major camps that took over. We were originally the Warders of Men, and then the Warders were supplanted eventually by the camp called the Iron Riders. And then the Iron Riders were supplanted by the camp called the Glass Walkers, and the whole tribal name changed. So now, we keep Glass Walkers for the sake of simplicity, but there's a chance that if we got most Glass Walkers to be like my, tri- my camp, the Random Interrupts, we'd be called the Random Interrupts. And Vander Linden's goal is that the, si- the Glass Walkers cease to exist and that the whole tribe becomes cyber dogs. So everyone's trying to focus on their achievements. So I've already slated myself to present right after the glass walkers, or right after the cyber dogs. The cyber dogs will present their techno fetish achievements and things like that, and then I'll show the dirty little secrets, completely undercutting all their credibility, preventing them from being able to shift, pivot away, and it will create a uniting of the camps that hasn't been seen in centuries. A purge. A purge of a cancer that gets our rage boiling. Not only that, it could work as a tool in the favor of the children of Gaia. Mark, or sorry, Kyle guards the low. Mark guides the fallen. Because it shows the rest of the nation that the Glasswalkers are trustworthy. And despite our ideological differences on occasion regarding who went mad first, the Worm or the Weaver, it is clear that our tribe, despite those differences, will purge the cancer from ourselves, which gives the children a leg up in trying to bolster efforts of peace between the tribes. You came to the wrong children of Gaia to uh, espouse unity at the sacrifice of some. Perhaps. I don't want to sacrifice them. Only that we do need to purge this cancer, and this is the best way to do it. And this is the best way to save as many lives as possible. You can't save everyone. (laughs) So you have to save who you can. They're going to accuse us of aligning with the Weaver, Kyle. They're going to say that we betrayed the tribes. They're going to say that we turned with the Glasswalkers and didn't decide to tell our tell our kin what's been happening there. In the terms of striking a deal, we'll have nothing to show for it. But your word, Rhea, 
if we get your your elder involved in this, what is his? Well, he's not my elder. Rhea leads his steel as your elder. Then this elder, he's a Philodox, correct? If I rec- memory serves me correctly, he is. There are gifts by Philodoxes, and if he is one, and I am going to tell him anyway, as part of our agreement, so that this Karen of yours is defended. There are gifts of the Philodox that make it so all parties involved know when someone's broken their word. I am willing to subject myself to this gift with you to make sure that you know I am dead serious in making sure that the best possible outcome happens. All right, then. One more concession. A copy of this recording. Done. It's what will release an hour after your presentation. Very well. I accept this. I accept your terms. As you see, kind of Lauren Soundwave, she's tearing up because she is thinking about all the people she knows who are likely going to probably get caught up in this purge, regardless of intentions. I am so sorry, Lauren. Let's go. And we will see how some of this plays out next time. Thank you to everyone who listened. We will catch you all in that next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.